which uh, I'm happy to show you later, but uh, let me. Pretty much uh, consistent. <laughs> consistent. <laughs> if I extrapolate this down up to let's say 10 or so, yeah, it's not it's not very small. It's not very large. This is like an observed star formation rate, and if you uh, extend it up to let's say 10 or so, it's like you know, 10 to the minus 3 uh, solar mass per in this uh, unit or so, something like this. Yeah. One more question. Yeah. In your first talk, you mentioned about the low metallicity star. Mm. You, did, you, did, you didn't talk about this. No, oh, no, 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 I did. It was a mixture of multiple topics, so you might get confused. The whole purpose is actually, you know, whether or not we could explain the, the elemental abundances of these uh, metal clusters, okay. especially with this uh, small ion content. And these two stars have these uh, elemental abundances. Uh, our proposal is these stars were uh, you know, second generation stars formed out of uh, uh, metal emitted gas. And that the source of metal emitment is probably a supernova with 40 solar mass first generation star so That is more like motivation and the goal to explain these uh, elemental abundances. Yeah, I think you touched on a little bit, but uh, uh, you basically got angle momentum. Yes. The fact that you can make multiple star systems. Yes. And you know, Tommy Wolf and his group you know, have shown you can form binary stars. Right. So you know that could affect you know your initial mass of the stars that are formed since some can fragment and make smaller stars. Right. Um, certainly, yes. Uh, we also This is a work with Thomas Wright, different from uh, Matt Truk and Doma Bell, but we, we also have this uh, kind of thing. But remember, the, these multi binary systems, or multiple systems, they uh, were found at most only in the very beginning phase of this system. Okay. So this is an indication of these multiple systems. But in the end, even these uh, small clumps are rapidly accreted onto the center of mass. So, uh, we need uh, really even more sophisticated calculation to follow the evolution of this one. Our case, you know, we followed the entire evolution of this system over 100,000 years, but these calculations are only like 10 years or so. And it doesn't really uh, give a definite answer for this uh, uh, protostellar evolution. But certainly we, uh, we continue working on what will happen in these multiple systems. In a sense, our um, angular momentum transport and efficiency of gas mass accretion is indeed, in a sense, uh, including overall e uh, effect of these clumps and spirals and so on. It's just uh, parameter wise. Yeah, but not very significantly inconsistent with this uh, formation of these clumps. This might be a stupid question. Um, if if uh, for some reason you are given a black hole before horizon, what uh, before inflation, what would happen to you? <laughs> oh, you mean the universe itself? Um, no, no, there is a black hole in the in the universe yeah. before inflation. Okay. After inflation, will it be inflated or just evaporated? <laughs> that's that's completely. I'm not familiar. I can only speculate. I don't know. Um, our, our, our basic belief is, you know, in, in the very beginning, there's really nothing. And even there's no black hole. And then this inflation of the universe creation was uh, triggered by a very random fluctuation of some upscale theory. But the existence of the black hole back then was completely beyond my, I'm interested in, but uh, beyond my, <laughs> my research topic. Questions from students? Uh, you mentioned that the first star is formed before the supermassive black hole. Mm. So, and the supermassive black hole is very, uh, is very massive. So, there, uh, I was wondering in the very early universe, is the star number density higher than today? Because 
Okay, okay. <laughs> um, good question. Neither, neither in observations nor theory, we can really uh, uh, give the relative numbers, but I should mention that, you know, for example, this is uh, very massive one. We know so far only one or a few okay. for the, on a very large area of the sky. And if in the 3D volume, this is like the number of is one per gigaparsec, billion parsec cube volume. So this is a very rare object. And certainly there are many, many, many more stars than this. So things we are trying that uh, I, I, I really see your question that uh, we actually don't want to make all of these smaller ones to become very massive. <coughs> There must be only one out of many possibilities, only one slight possibility to make this uh, direction happen. And, uh, so suddenly there are many stars, but only uh, one massive black hole in a very large body. But uh, statistically, we need more astronomical observations. Good question. Yeah, I, I just want to follow up on your answer to my yeah, question. Sure, sure, sure. So if these clumps might merge and to make this more yes. massive star, then yeah. presumably this star is rapidly rotating. Yes. And so probably the stellar evolution is quite different because of mixing. Possibly. So it's quite different. Yeah, even so the like supernova the, that you form will be different. Yeah. The chemicals that you produce will be different. Yeah, yeah. Feedback efficiency also. Um, yeah, one can even speculate in hydrogen envelope of the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even more stronger. That is very interesting. But so far, um, in the part of protostellar evolution, we don't include this uh, effect of rotation. But that's certainly one direction. Yeah. Okay, more questions for our students? So, uh, in, in your very beginning, talk, uh, you talk about the uh, uh, nearby star. Yes. There is a very tiny star, uh, yes. uh, uh, very poor metallicity. And yes. Can you talk more about this, uh, the environment or something? Yes. It should be, it should be, I think it should be very uh, isolated. Um, yeah, <laughs> good question. Interestingly, there are, you know, this, this low metallicity is very peculiar. But there are many metal poor stars indeed, like even hundreds of such stars with the metallicity just uh, say 1,000 times smaller metallicity than the sun or so. They, they don't look like in a very special condition. They are just ordinary stars, except that typically you know, there is a galactic disk. Typically they are moving uh, vertically because they are called halo stars. So disk stars like the sun, they are moving the orbit of this disk rotation. But these stars are usually moving uh, vertically or toward the center. That's only one difference. This, this is what we believe these stars are the, the, the literally the, you know, archaeological remnant or no, messenger from the early universe. They have been floating around, then eventually possibly incorporated in the galaxy in some way. But uh, definitely they were not really formed within the galactic disk. That's the only one difference. But otherwise, they all look like a, the ordinary star, and then only the spectra looks very interesting. In, in, interesting. Uh, this one, <laughs> if, you look, if you believe this uh, small dip, then there is a small amount of iron. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay, any final question? In our case, there are a variety of epochs. Um, typically, the, the age of the universe was one to three hundred million years. Or so. It depends on the age. Say, they they do, they do, they are not formed at once. They are even one by one from from one hundred million years to three hundred million years. Or so. yeah. On this average, the mean density. The ratio is ah uh, fifteen to twenty. Or so. So uh, if you have more questions.
question. Uh, feel free to come to the podium and ask uh, now. Thank you. Thank you.